Hello, I'm television meteorologist and severe weather safety expert Charlie Neese. Today, we're going to program a Midland WR100 weather radio. Many of you have weather radios. Maybe you just bought one, or maybe you've had one and you've never programmed it because it seemed a little complicated. But it's really easy just based on a few basic steps. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to program the Midland WR100, but the same basic steps will also work for newer models, including the Midland WR120 that many of you will see in stores today. So let's get started. So the first step in making sure that your radio is properly programmed, you need your county code. And each county in the United States has an individual code that we program into these radios so that the warnings for your county are what alarm the radios. You don't want your radio going off when warnings are for other counties, especially outside of your immediate area. It's also called a FIPS code. I have provided a link in the description of this video at my website, charlieneese.com. Click on that link and then just follow the menu until you find your county and you'll be able to program that six digit code into the radio. The other thing that you need to make sure is that your radio is programmed to the proper channel or the proper frequency to make sure that you hear those broadcasts from the National Weather Service. If your radio is not tuned to the proper channel, you might miss the warnings even if you do have the proper codes. Once you have those, then it's time to program the radio. And the way that the radio is programmed is you'll have a menu that essentially has multiple lists in it. This is the way I want you to think about it. List one, and then under each individual listing, you'll have a submenu with another list. So when we start to program and we go into the menu, in the display, you're only going to see one of those items in the list at a time. And we'll use the up and down arrows to go through that list. And then once you find the particular area that you want to program, then you're going to be taken to a submenu where you'll only see one thing at a time. But there really is a whole list there. So that's the way I want you to kind of picture it in your mind as you're programming what we're going to do. We'll hit the menu button. We'll go into the first list, and that will give us the major items that we have to program. And then once we get on each individual item, we'll hit the select button that will take us to the second list. But again, you're only seeing one of the items at a time. Now that you have your county code, it's time to start programming the radio. First thing that I like to do is to put the batteries in. Most of the Midland weather radios that are desktop models take three AA batteries. Now the batteries are just used for backup power. The unit should stay plugged into the wall. I like to put the batteries in when I program just to make sure that they're in there though. Now here's how you start the programming process. All right, remember we're talking about menus and submenus, but you're only going to see one item at a time in the display. So to get into the first menu, we hit the menu button. Now what we're going to do the first thing is to set the time. You don't have to set the time because that does not affect the operation of the radio and most people do not use it as a clock. But if you want to set the time, hit the menu button. That takes you into that first list. There are other items in the list that you can't see. You're only seeing one at a time. So we are in the time menu now. Once you get to what you want to program, you hit the select button. So in this case, that's what we're going to do. Now you can see the time flashing. We just use the up and down arrows to set the time. Right now it's a little after 8 o'clock in the morning. Once I set the time, then I go over to the next and you'll see the next will start flashing. And if I want to change the next one, the next one starts flashing and I just use the up arrows to change the actual numbers. So there's our time. When you're done, hit the menu button. That takes you back to the list. The next item in the list that we're going to program, we're going to hit the down arrow and you'll see it says light. Now light already is set to either be normal or on. Usually I like normal. That just means when you hit a button on the radio, the backlight on the display here will turn on. So that's what it's automatically set to. That's what I like to have it on. I'll go back. There you see menu. Now I'm in that main list again. I'll go down to the next item. Alert test. We're going to skip that right now. Going to go down to alert type. Now this is important. To set the alert type, I'm going to hit select. You can have voice 
or you can hit the down arrow, display, or tone. The thing that is most effective on this radio is the voice setting. That means when a warning is issued, for eight seconds you'll hear the alarm, and then after that eight second period, you'll hear a voice that comes on and tells you what the warning is and how long the warning is in effect for. So it's set to voice. So we're gonna go back to menu. Now we're in that long list again. We're gonna go down, same set. This is where you get into the nitty gritty. Let's hit select and we're gonna set this. Now you can set it to single, any, multiple. What we're gonna do, I like to set it to single just to go off for one particular county. Even if you live in the western part of the county, right next to the county line, in all likelihood the way warnings are issued today, if there is a storm that's going to affect your area, the county west will be warned and your county will be warned as well. So you don't have to set it for multiple counties like we used to have to. Now a single county pretty much is enough. So if you're going to set to single, by the way, make sure it's not on any because that means that it will go off for any county in your area and the thing will constantly be going off and most people get tired of that and they turn it off. I don't want you to do that. I want you to make it the most effective for your area. So make sure it's on single. And again, I'm just using the up and down arrows to select that. Once I get to single, that means I'm going to set a single code for a county in there. I hit the select button. You'll see saying that stands for specific area message encoding. That means that it can be set for that one code. And we're going to hit select again. Then you get into programming your county. This is where you take that six digit code that you found online for your county and you program it in. The way that you do it, you see the first number flashing. You use the up and down arrows to set and to change the numbers. Once you get your first column set, to get to the next one you hit the over arrow to the right. Then you just simply use the up and down arrows to change that number as well. Then you use the arrow to the right and you change until you get all the numbers in there. Once you get all the numbers in there, hit menu. That'll take you backwards. And then we'll hit menu again. And we're going to hit menu one more time. That takes us back. Now we're in that main list, the main menu. After the same set, after the code is set, then you go to channel. Channel is also very important in making sure that the radio is operating properly. You want to make sure that you're on the right channel to receive a warning for your area. So here's how you select the channel. Hit the select button. North winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Wednesday night. Partly now in this case, you could hear that I'm already set on the right channel. But if I weren't set, here's what would happen. When the channel comes on, if you hear static or you hear a faint signal, keep changing the channel until you hear the clearest signal. Let's do this again. Once you're on channel, hit select. Rain 60%. There are seven pre-programmed channels. Use the up and down arrows until you get to the one where you receive the best signal. Once you have hit menu, now my channel is set. I know that I've got the strongest signal out of those seven channels. And again, you just use the up and down arrows to select until you hear a good clear signal. That means the radio is within range for your area. Once we're done programming the channel, you're pretty much done with programming the radio. Just hit the menu button again, and once you get back to the time, you are done and your radio is ready to receive those signals. So, once you're back to the time on the menu, you're pretty much done programming the radio. A couple of things that to remember. Number one, keep the antenna up so that it will receive those signals. Also, make sure the weather radio button on the side is also turned on. A great place for the radio to be is right beside your bed at your bedside table, especially if you live in the southeast where we have so many nighttime tornadoes. This will make sure and wake you up. And it definitely will wake you up. Here's what it sounds like when the alarm goes off. definitely loud enough to get you out of bed. Now once the alarm goes off, you'll hear that for eight seconds, then the voice will come on and tell you what the warning is about and when it expires. If you want to put it back into the snooze mode to wait for the next warning, you just press the weather snooze button. Also, you can press the weather snooze button and hear weather information 24 hours a day on the radio at any time whether you have warnings or not. I'm glad you got a weather radio and I hope this helps you program it. If you have any questions you can email me charlie at charlieneese.com.